With me now from the U.S.-Mexico border is Republican House Speaker uh, Mike Johnson. Speaker Johnson, thanks so much for being here. Uh, welcome to the lead, uh, your first time as Speaker. Uh, so you're at the border today, and I presume uh, you're seeing a very dire situation, hardworking border agents, uh, you know, who, who can't do their jobs with what they have. They need more money. They need more colleagues. They need more beds for asylum seekers. They need more funding. Um, how come the House has not yet touched this $14 billion supplemental request from the Biden administration? The White House is hammering you on it. Why not take it up and, and, and help these individuals? Jake, good to be with you. Sorry it's taken so long to come on with you since I became speaker. Listen, this is a catastrophe down here. And what the White House is proposing is more money to process and allow more illegals into the country. We need to do the opposite of that. And this is, you don't need to take my word for it. Listen to the deputy chief of the U.S. Border Patrol who was with us last night. And he told us in his own words, he said, it's as if I'm at an open fire hydrant. I don't need more buckets to, to dump the water. He said, I need to turn the flow off. That's why we're here today, Jake. We had 64 House Republicans here representing 26 states and one U.S. territory, everybody from California to Maryland, Michigan to Florida, because every state in America is a border state right now. This catastrophe can come to an end if the Biden administration will do its job, and they've refused to do it. They're doing the opposite. So the $14 billion, um, there are, you're right, 1,600 asylum officers that would be part of that to speed up processing of asylum claims. That's what you're talking about. Uh, but there also would be 1,300 more uh, border Patrol agents to work alongside the, the 20,200, uh, and also funding to hire 1,000 Custom and Border prote Protection F officers with a focus on counter fentanyl. So it's not all, in fact, most of it is not related to uh, 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 processing asylum seekers. A, a lot of it has to do with what you're talking about. Jake, the president should come to the border. It, what, a, what an idea that would be. He should talk to the Border Patrol agents year, who are you know, down here. I the think morale he went last is year, low. just FYI. Yeah, too. well, he went for a photo op. He should come and spend a couple of days like we have to be with the people here on the ground who are fighting this war on the border. That's effectively what it is. We have so many people, Jake, seven million people have come into the country since Biden uh, walked into the Oval Office. And that's a, a low estimate. Most people believe it may be twice that high. We have it, nearly two million gotaways that we know about, not to mention those who evaded capture. Over 300 uh, known terrorists apprehended at the border trying to come in. We don't know how many evaded uh, capture and, and uh, detection. They're in the country, potentially setting up terrorist cells everywhere. Fentanyl is the number one cause of death for Americans aged 18 to 49, flowing over the border like an open sewer. Human traffic is the number one business of the cartels here. Estimated, we were told today, Jake, one of the local sheriffs here, said that they believe that the cartels are making $32 million a week on trafficking human beings into the U.S. That's over $1.5 billion a year. Transnational criminal organizations, and the Biden administration seems to care nothing about it. Remember, they could they could issue executive orders and fix this overnight. You could uh, restate, reinstate the Remain in Mexico policy. You could stop the catch and release policy that the Biden administration right. assists upon. You could do some, some very important things, but they refuse to do it. So just, just one note on the terrorist thing. There aren't hundreds of known terrorists getting into the country. There are people uh, whose uh, identity have been flagged on a certain database. I just don't want people out there thinking that they're, you know, 200 members of Hamas have flown into the into the country and we don't even know about it. It's a, it's a little hey, bit more hey, complicated. Jake, I'm hey, not, Jake. I'm not I'm not saying that it's not serious. I'm just saying these aren't necessarily terrorists. That's the terrorist watch list, Jake. Right. It takes quite a bit to make that list. Okay, these are dangerous people who are coming into the country, and we have hardened criminals who are coming from all these countries around right. the world. They're opening prisons and sending them here. We saw it today, Jake. We know what's happening. We're talking to the people on the ground. So these are not Republican talking points. This is reality, and the White House needs to wake up to it. Right now, and, and these criminals and individuals have been coming in for years, uh, Republican, Democratic. Uh, administrations. Let's talk about H.R. 2, because that's the House Republican bill uh, that calls basically to resume um, uh, some of the Trump era policies, including uh, building the Trump era border wall. It would strongly increase the restrictions on who could apply for asylum. Um, critics of, of, of that say it would essentially gut the asylum process. It, it certainly would restrict it. That bill is not going to get 60 votes in the Senate. And whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, I leave to you. But it won't get 60 votes in the Senate. It won't get signed by a Democratic Senate, uh, Democratic president. Is there a compromise on border security that's being negotiated right now that you would allow to be voted on? 
even if a majority of House Republicans are not behind it. Something that would improve situation, the situation at the border, even if not to the point that you want it to be improved. Jake, the reason that we've insisted on the provisions of H.R. 2, which is the bill that we passed seven months ago that's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk collecting dust, the reason we've insisted upon that is because each of those provisions work together to secure the border. You can't, for example, just reform the asylum program and leave the, the broken parole process um, uh, un, uh, unrepaired. But then you would have a loophole that would do absolutely nothing. You can't just uh, reinstate Remain in Mexico. Even just that action would stem the flow estimated about 70 percent. But you have to also end catch and release. All these things work together. And so you can't just pick and choose from them from a menu and expect that you're going to solve the problem. I'll quote to you one of the sheriffs of Terrell County down here, a, a, a border county who has to deal with this crisis every day. He had lunch with us today and he told us, he said uh, he was a, before he became the sheriff, he worked for the uh, U.S. Border Patrol for 26 years. He said he had worked through four administrations who were doing great work, but it took less than six months for the Biden administration, in his uh, words, to unwind 100 years of progress that the U.S. Border Patrol had accomplished. Six months. These are policy choices that got us in this situation. And what we're demanding is that the policies change for the good of every single American citizen. But you, I guess my question is, is if you don't get H.R. 2, that's it? You're not willing to, let's say, let's say there was, I mean, I've seen the White House and the Democrats in the Senate go in your direction on this issue more than I've ever seen Democrats uh, go in your direction. And I've been in this town for a little longer than you. I've seen President Bush try to do this. I've seen President Obama try to do this. Uh, and it always comes down to the House Republicans and what they're willing to accept you would turn down a compromise that was not 100% of HR2? Uh, Jake, I'm not going to answer hypotheticals because they've not sent us any, uh, any, any suggestion yet. There's, there's no uh, draft bill, but I would tell you, I don't care if they call it HR2. I do care about the provisions that will seal the border. I don't think now's the time to do comprehensive immigration reform because, to your point, it's very complicated. It's very complex to do. But we can seal the border. We could do it overnight. The president has the existing authority under existing federal law to do that, and he refuses to do it. Secretary Mayorkas has administered this. He's in charge of operational control of the border. And what we see here is absolute mayhem. It, 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 this is not a Republican or Democrat issue. Right. It affects every American and every citizen along here. That's, so, that's, why, that's who they need to listen to. The argument is that there's only so much a president can do. Even Donald Trump could not seal the border. Even when the Remain in Mexico policy was in place in 2019, there was still a migrant crisis. There was still a crisis uh, at the border. And you might remember all those uh, TV ads that Donald Trump ran in 2018 about the caravan heading uh, into the United States. Uh, a lot of people say this needs to be solved by Congress. You're the guys that write the laws. You're the ones in charge of asylum. And yes, President Trump or President Biden could do X, Y, or Z, but it's really up to Congress. When, when President Trump entered the Oval Office, he he put in the Remain in Mexico policy. He ended the catch and release policy. He did the fundamental common sense things that stem the flow. It was down to a tiny fraction of what it is right now. Jake, 302,000 encounters at the border in December alone. It's the highest number in history. And, and it's going to continue because they're showing no, uh, no, no inclination at all to change it. They have rolled out the welcome mat. By the way, this is costing American taxpayers billions and billions of dollars to house and feed and educate and, and give health care to all these illegals. If you're from one of these poor countries, why would you not make the journey? You, you, why would you not submit your children to that dangerous journey? We don't know what's happening to them on the way. Yeah. This is a humanitarian crisis. We walk through the centers today, Jake. It would, it would make the average American citizen cry to see what's happening here, and it must stop. Right, I, th which is why uh, some people are saying, why not pass the $14 billion supplemental uh, bill that, that President Biden has put before you to at least try to help but, with some of these that, issues? That won't solve that no, won't solve any of the problems solve, no. I just articulated. Right, no, that won't no. do a darn thing. Well, no. it, I, I'm sure the people in the Border Patrol agents that, that you're with think it might do something, at least in terms of making their job a little easier for the next month no, or so. No, actually they don't, they don't. They don't want the $14 billion? No, no. I, I just quoted to you the deputy chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, and he said he doesn't need more buckets. In other words, he doesn't need more personnel to handle the flow. He needs to turn the flow off. That's what we're talking about. This is not about sending more money down here. It's about yeah. changing the policy, and the White House seems not to understand that.
Yeah, but I mean, even President Trump couldn't couldn't turn the faucet off, right? I mean, I understand your point that he did more well, than, he, than Biden did. He but turned like, the flow down. Yeah, but it, like it's not it, he's it's a, it's the presidency. It's not it's not a magician. But let me just ask you one quick question, sir, uh, while I have you, and I know you've been generous with your time. Um, some members of the House Freedom Caucus, a very important flank in the Republican Party, are talking about uh, refusing. Uh, to, to vote uh, f to keep the government open unless HR2 is law. How seriously do you take those threats? Well, look, I don't think it's just the Freedom Caucus. I think you have most House Republicans who are responding to their constituents' concerns about this border. So you're, you're hearing some, um, some, some deep resolve. We said it here in the press conference here within the last hour that we must get this done as the top priority. So I'm, I'm not going to address hypotheticals about what the scenario is, but I will tell you that we are resolved on that. That and trying to cut non-defense discretionary spending because we passed an important and dangerous threshold today, $34 trillion in federal debt. We are in serious, serious uh, dire straits as a nation, and we have to address those things seriously, and we will. That's what you're hearing. All right. Well, we only talked about the border today because you're at the border. I hope you come back. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, and it's good to have you on. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson, thanks so much.